In business this week, three things to know. First, murder charges. Baltimore prosecutors charged six cops in the death of Freddie Gray. We'll run down the case and then look at the impact this case will have on Baltimore's economic future. Then, despite gains on Friday, market analysts are calling for a 10% correction. The last one was four years ago, and they say we are long overdue. And it's Super Sports Saturday. Boxing, the Triple Crown, the NBA, and NHL playoffs all jump in the ring for your viewing attention. Rise Exchange starts now. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Schmertz. Baltimore prosecutors on Friday dropped the hammer on six police officers involved in the arrest of Freddie Gray. The 25-year-old black man suffered severe injuries and died while in Baltimore police custody two weeks ago. Since then, there have been a series of violent protests in Maryland's largest city. Here's a rundown of the charges. Six officers accused. The most serious second-degree murder is levied against Officer Cesar Goodson Jr., the other charges include manslaughter, assault, and false imprisonment. That charge, the result of prosecutors saying that Gray should never have been arrested in the first place. Here's what Prosecutor Marilyn Mosby had to say. Despite Mr. Gray's seriously deteriorating medical condition, no medical assent assistance was rendered or summons for Mr. Gray at that time by any officer. President Obama also commented after the charges were brought. It is absolutely vital that the truth comes out on uh, what happened uh, to Mr. Freddie Gray. And uh, it is my practice not to comment on the legal processes involved. Uh, that would not be appropriate. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, justice needs to be served. All the evidence uh, needs to be presented. Arise News correspondent Shahan Ramkissoon has been covering the story in Baltimore and joins us now. Good afternoon, Shahan. After Marilyn Mosby made the announcement, what was the reaction on the street? Well, Andrew, I'll tell you, there was absolute joy. While she was making that announcement to reporters, there were a group of people standing right there listening to what she was saying, and they all applauded. And we've seen that continue uh, throughout Baltimore for the whole morning and throughout the afternoon. People honking on their horns, as you can hear right now, is their way of celebrating. And lots of them throwing up their fists in the air. This is a victory for them, many say. It's a victory, but it's only charges right now. What is the next step in the criminal prosecution for these police officers? Yeah, that's exactly what will happen and what many people will see, wait, will wait to see rather. A lot of people are going to be very interested to see the jury selection in this trial that's uh, supposed to happen. Uh, they're going to see and question whether or not there are enough African American people being selected to be a part of this uh, jury uh, team. And, and that's the one question that many people are raising every day, uh, all the time. Uh, they want to know exactly who's going to sit in this case. So that's the one thing that people are looking out for. And of course, a lot of criticism for the state prosecutor as well. Uh, police unions coming out saying that she's too close to the case, uh, uh, that she's married to a councilman, and that she's too close to the Freddie Gray's family attorney. So they've asked for her to be removed. And that might be one of the challenges that we see even before this case gets to court. Uh, and are further demonstrations planned tonight? Is there a sense that the city has sort of moved past the violent protests at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. It seems like everybody's moved away from the violence. Everyone's uh, preaching a message of calm. Uh, that's what we're seeing throughout the city. Uh, lots of people are setting up little speakers all over the place, just preaching for people to come together. They see this as a victory no matter what. The fact that we have police officers who are being taken to court because somebody died while in their custody. They say Baltimore should set an example for all other states where black men died at the hands of police, but there was no justice according to them. So they are very happy, which possibly means no violence tonight. Okay, Shahan in Baltimore, thank you so much. Well, now that six officers have been charged, 
in the death of Freddie Gray. This opens the door to civil lawsuits against the accused by the family. Just last week, the parents of Mike Brown filed a wrongful death suit against the city of Ferguson. Our next guest has been following both the Ferguson and Baltimore cases very closely. We welcome attorney Midwin Charles, the founder of the Midwin Charles and Associates Law Firm. She is a frequent contributor to many network news organizations. Midwin, welcome to Arise Exchange and thank you for your time today. Thanks for having me. So how does the civil case proceed in this matter? Usually the civil case waits until the criminal case is wrapped up. Isn't that true? That's right. Usually what um, uh, a plaintiff would do here would be the family of Freddie Gray, is they would wait until the criminal prosecution is over so that they can um, essentially uh, not shift the focus away from the criminal prosecution and wait until the uh, criminal prosecution is over and then go ahead and file the civil lawsuit. And I have to tell you, uh, based on the charges and just based on the simple um, factual evidence that we already know, which is uh, that Freddie Gray was carrying a switchblade that was legal under Maryland law, mm-hmm. um, and, and that he was put in a, a physical position during the arrest that hurt him. Um, I'd be surprised if I saw a no or not liable uh, decision here from a jury on a civil case. On a civil case, because of course the uh, the burden of proof is entirely different in a criminal case. Is this? A little bit more, it's hard to handicap this case without, of course, all the facts in front of you, but is this sort of case, both on the criminal level and the civil level, uh, different and maybe easier to prove than the Michael Brown case in the Ferguson? I, I think this one is a little bit different. One, you you have videotape, although some will say, well, hey, we had videotape during, you know, Eric Garner. But one, you have videotape, and two, the fact that he was not doing anything wrong is really clear, and it's glaring here, mm-hmm. and it won't sort of over- overshadow, um, I-, I think, the prosecution. Whereas with Mike Brown, I think the fact that they strategically released that video uh, of him strong-arming um, at the store, I think it harmed and painted um, the image of Mike Brown and the fact that he was up to no good, which was purposeful, right? That's okay. precisely what... What they're trying to um, show. And you mentioned, you mentioned Eric Gardner. That was the, uh, the case where you're, that involved a New York Staten City police Island, officer yes. in Staten Island. Um, how quickly do the cities in these cases settle these cases, especially if the criminal case goes the way prosecutors want them to go? Um, you know, it depends. Uh, you know, it, it really depends. Oftentimes, um, they will uh, come to the table before the trial uh, even begins. Um, a lot of times, the way it works in a civil suit, because I do civil litigation as well, mm-hmm. is the plaintiff will go ahead and sometimes make a demand letter. They'll, they'll send a demand to uh, to the defendant. Here it would be the city uh, of Baltimore and demand, uh, you know, listen, this is the evidence that we have. This is what we believe we will show uh, uh, and, and be successful at, at it during a civil trial. And we are demanding X amount of dollars. And, and if you don't come to the negotiating table, then we will file our lawsuit. So some people do it that way or they just go ahead and file a lawsuit. Yeah. Because okay. A lot of times people sue just to make a point as well. Sure. Midwin Charles, thank you so much. You're welcome. Turning to the market, stocks rebounded Friday as biotech and Apple staged a recovery. Here's a look at the final numbers. The Dow finishing the day up 183 points to 18,024. The S&P 500 up 22 and changed to 2108. The NASDAQ having a nice recovery back over the 5,000 mark, up nearly 64 points. Taking a look at how the markets finished the week, the Dow up just over 1% back in positive territory now for the year just barely. The S&P 500 up over 1% as well, and the NASDAQ up about 1 and a third percent. Some of the top stocks we're watching today, shares of LinkedIn fell 20% in early trading. This after the business networking site gave weak forward guidance. LinkedIn closing down 47 points. That's off by 18%. Shares of Apple rebounding after reports of a defect with the new Apple Watch caused the stock to tumble on Thursday. Apple up about 3%. And taking a look at commodities, gold closing at 1176.60 an ounce. And oil up again, just under $60. Oil rallied the last few weeks. U.S. manufacturing fell last, um, fell last month over lower oil prices and fewer sales to U.S. energy companies. Financial information services company Market says the reading of 54.1 in April is a three-month low. Reading over 50, though, does indicate growth. And the U.S. Commerce Department says the nation's construction projects dropped 0.6% in March to an annual rate of just under 
a trillion dollars. Coming up, John Manley is here to tell us if we are overdue for a stock market sell-off or if we have more to run. You're watching a Rise Exchange. <laughs> 